Yeah, I had to switch back to the newer ski mask. I did uh, Chrissy Mayer's uh, Never Have I Ever show last night, and I was drinking White Russians, and I got milk all over it. I went to go put it on today, and it's, it, it's moldy. I, I couldn't believe the smell. I said, thank God I ordered another one. We're here with Tony Mazur. Tony, you're a fan of the show? You've seen a few episodes? Yes, I am. I have really nothing to promote. I do, I do radio in Akron, Ohio, which is wonderful. Right. And, uh, I, I do comedy, but not often and uh, not very often before the pandemic. And now I, I really don't care about comedy that much. I have not yeah. missed it one bit. Yeah, like I, I, I had the urge a few times to, to go back, but like I'm doing a show this Saturday. But the, the club here, it's a hallway. Let's face it. I mean, it's not like a, a real bingo club. hall. Yeah, it's just a hallway. There's probably 25 <laughs> chairs. They've never been completely filled. So as you're just going in, like, I just get excited just to try some new shit. But then again, you don't even know if it works. So it's like, I don't know. I enjoy doing this. Well, yeah, that's, and it's funny. I talked to Kevin Brennan on my soon-to-be uh, available podcast whenever uh -oh. things are getting submitted. I don't have a name for it. I just am submitting a bunch of stuff. Uh, I've pre-taped a bunch of interviews. You're going to like, uh, I'll have to come back when I actually have a podcast to promote. When yeah. it's there and you can actually say, hey, Tony has a podcast. Go download it now. Instead, you're going to wait two weeks. Hey, we'll anyway. promote the Twitter. That way, you know, the followers can find you. And, uh, well, they probably already know you anyways because you're always, you're always going after something, you know, big news story breaks. You're in there. You're liking. You're retweeting. It's great. I hate, I hate everything. I know. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's why I was like, okay, I like this guy. I got to get him on the show. So this is so so it's interesting because uh, having me on because I do I, I watch the show and I listen to it and uh, Chad Zumach and I for people I'm, I'm like in the MLC universe because of Chad Zumach right and the only reason because of Chad and Jim Florentine who said uh, he, he, Florentine I remember years ago it was about four years ago was like you got to check out uh, Kevin Brennan's <laughs> podcast it's yeah. just this guy just shits on everything. It's just he just loves it. Yeah. And so I tune in and it, and Neil was, or uh, not Neil. Oh, geez. We'll get to Neil later. <laughs> um, but uh, Lenny was still on the show. Mm. And the first thing I hear from Kevin and I had heard of Kevin. I had known, I, like I'd seen him on like premium blend or some of the other comedy central shows, but like, I didn't really know much about him. And all of a sudden he starts the whole podcast off by going, well, my fucking wife just spent $31 to, for, to Louis C.K. I get the bill and it says to Louis C.K. for Horace and fucking Pete. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to like this guy. I think he already knew how much the tickets were before she bought them. You know, he's just so <laughs> on the point. And then, and then Chad tells me he's, uh, I was doing, a, we were doing a comedy show up in uh, the Cleveland area uh, where uh, I'm based out of and where Chad's from. And uh, I, was go I was at the gym and Chad calls me, and, and I know that there's going to be a, like a blizzard that night. So I'm like, oh, here he goes. He's going to tell me the show got canceled tonight. He's oh. like, did you listen to MLC today? And i like, uh -oh. no, what? And he said, Jimmy Martinez almost beat the shit out of oh, Kevin. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, what happened? He's like, you have to, it's on YouTube. And he, he almost assaults Kerry Carabas. And I'm like, all right, I got to do this. So I'm, I'm at the gym. And I've got my phone next to me and I'm looking like, and I'm just like, I had to stop. And someone's coming over going like, uh, Harry, are you done? I'm like, yeah, hang on, one more set, one more set, but I, I got to see this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes <laughs> sense. Like you could be in the middle of a shopping line that's moving quickly. You're going to have to watch that. You know, you hear Kevin Brennan almost got beat up by Jimmy Martinez. You have to tune into that. And it was everything that I expected when I saw that. Clip. Oh yeah. So I, so I want to give a little background for people who don't know anything about me. Absolutely. I feel like I'm picking up your show, but. Uh, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm 32. I'm a radio guy. I've been doing radio for now for uh, in broadcasting. I've done internet radio and podcasts since I was 18. Oh, so, nice. So I'm 32. So I've been doing this over 13 years. And um, it's interesting because I got into radio because of the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah, yeah. And which I think everybody, everybody, Opie and Anthony really is the godfather of podcasts. They really are. They really are. That's yes, yes. Is that how you got into that universe too? It is. It is. Well, honestly, I started with Stern, and then that didn't last very long. I quickly, did. I quickly latched on to Artie. <coughs> Artie went on to the Kumia Network, and that's when everything unfolded. I went back to the years because I'm, you know, I'm a younger cat, so I went and I found out who Opie and Anthony were. Quickly became I was like, wow, these guys were there in that era too. Like these, these were the guys that you listen to if. 
you weren't on the big bandwagon kind of thing. Oh, yeah. But I mean, and, and I was in, God, I may, I may have been 13 or 14. The first time I tuned into Opie and Anthony was 2001. They were syndicated to Cleveland. And I listened one afternoon, it was a Friday, and they were doing what was called the What the Hell is That competition. <laughs> and what it was is they would have people coming in from uh, everywhere in the country, they would, and they'd have a bunch of doctors. So somebody came in with like three nipples. There was another <sighs> guy who had like uh, some black hole in his mouth that was just completely cancerous from cigarettes. And, so it's just and chaos going on. And, I'm, and I remember, because I'm 13, but I'm listening to this, I'm like, this, this seems like X-rated. Should I be listening to this? Right, right. And then I got, and then of course I get fired a few months later and I went back on the Stern thing. But the problem is with Stern, when you listen to him on regular radio, it was commercial after commercial. Yeah. My drive to high school in those days was 15 minutes mm -hmm. and that was an entire commercial break for Stern. Absolutely. So I just drove and listened to nothing but commercials. So when ONA came back to regular radio in 2006, and I listened to the first day and I'm like, I'm hooked. I'm back on. Yeah. <laughs> and I listened to every single episode of Opie and Anthony for five straight years up wow. until about Patrice died. Yeah. And then after yeah. that, and then I followed Anthony after he got fired, went to compound, but Opie and Anthony is the reason I got into broadcasting and the reason you have a podcast. Yep. The reason so many people, like Chrissy Mayer has a podcast and doing her thing in hot water. All of them are because of Anthony Kumi on the Opie and Anthony show. I agree hundred percent because that was like a foundation show. And it just from some of the content that they had out and the things that they were doing, you know, it just made everybody realize like, wow, you know, I, I wish I could have something like that. And as technology grew fonder, you know, people started developing their own ideas because they were such a stepping stone by taking things so far. People were like, maybe I don't want to take it that far, but I'll do this as my show. So you're right. It was a, nope. hang. It was yeah. a hang because yes. it was the original podcast. Mm -hmm. Stern show was what brought everything to the forefront, but it didn't feel like it was a hang. It felt like just everybody, because there were scripted segments and they'd have yeah. Billy West call in as different characters and Jackie telling jokes. Opie and Anthony felt like it was two guys who just were drinking beers, cracked open the <laughs> microphones and started talking, which essentially is what happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why it resonates uh, so much with me is when, it, when Anthony's talking about, you know, working in attics and, and things like that. Because That's when I, do, I, would do, I would be doing work like that, listening to those guys, you know? And it yeah. was like, fuck, you know, I, I want to do something too, you know? And it's just, it really gave me that motivation. Because I've had these mics for, you know, six years probably at this point. And I never yeah. did anything with them. And, and you I've, say, what are you going to do? And yeah. Six years ago, people are like, well, let's start a podcast. Well, who was yeah. listening to podcasts six years ago? Exactly. Well, now they all are. Yeah, yeah. Now, and the problem is with podcasting, and I tell this to people who want to get into doing some kind of broadcasting, I say, start a podcast, but don't expect everyone's going to listen right away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Promote it to your Facebook friends, promote it on social media, put it, put it on Twitter and everything. You got to build your audience somewhere. Sometimes the audience, here's the thing, sometimes the audience doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just don't... Ha Maybe there are too many podcasts about baseball. Maybe there's yeah. too many podcasts about what your favorite kind of rock music is. Well, not only that, too. You, like, you find a niche. I tell my friends this uh, because a lot of those guys are in, in hard rock bands and stuff like that. I, I tell them all the time. I say, dudes, if you really want to make it, you know, get, gather some attention, you have to do something different. It, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's too much shit out there. Everything is so available. You're going to have to do something different, you know? There's an audience for everybody. It's like with porn. Right. It's like yeah, you, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. It, it's like, it, you know, at the time where you would talk about porn, it's like, oh, you know, who, who likes, you know, when somebody gets jizzed on <laughs> and shit on and punched in the nose, get a strawberry shortcake and everything. And you go, God, who would like that? And you find out there's thousands of people out there. That yeah, exactly. Into. That, that so, freaks me out sometimes when somebody <laughs> will tell me about a new porn I've never heard of. So I'll tell one of my friends, we'll be laughing. We'll look it up. We'll be like, there's an entire community devoted to this. What the fuck? <laughs> well, here's what I, okay. While well, we're on the topic of porn, before we get too far off, yeah. hey, whenever we get back, what is it with this incest porn? This I don't know. I brought this up on the show the other day. Uh, it's because when it first came out, I was like, okay, this must be a fad, a new thing. But if you really sit down and think, this has been a thing for a while now. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the porn sites, like I remember, I guess, in I was working offshore in 2014. I mean, that, that was the front page of, of the video. So that's six years now, you know? It's, it's all like every, you go on Pornhub, go on Pornhub right now, actually after this podcast, and then go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wait, wait until the podcast is done, and then you can go whatever your heart desires. 
and it's just all incest porn. It is, and you go to, but the thing is, you would see. I had a theory behind, uh, behind the whole thing that why they were promoting it for so long. But I've even squashed that theory at this point. Do you go to the most viewed videos, and it's all incest? It's you know, sister, brother, Fourth of July party. It's going down. Like what the fuck? Christmas Day, the whole family. It's just like, and you see how many views it's getting. I'm like, this is this can't be real. This is crazy. And I don't mean to, I don't mean to sound Pat Robertson or Jerry Falwell here, but I, that can't that can't be good for us. Is it, it can't be good for the mental health. No, I agree. Like it, whatever you want to do, get your rocks off and everything. If you're <laughs> part of it, part of no faps or no wanks and everything. You know, God bless you and everything. But that has to be some kind of fucked up mental illness that if you're going there and you're getting your rocks off and, and of course they're just actors but yeah yeah but you're going like oh it's stepmom and you know the son's there and he's he's in bed and the mom uh. splits him up with a blowjob and you go i i'm like okay I, if maybe if i listen to it on mute i know and when <laughs> it first came discussion. when it first came out that was just the title and then it started developing and developing and now it's a whole scripted thing where it's like oh shit they are brother and sister because they're, they're talking about it and like you say though when they first released it everybody probably felt the same way we did until they clicked on it and then yeah. they clicked on it again and then next thing you know we'll do it two years in and that's all they watch you know and then they get in a real relationship and then the real relationship they get in with a with a lady she has daughters it's like fuck whoa, whoa. Where does it, it, there's no end game. It's like a, it, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing for me. Well, and, and I know Gavin McInnes talked about this too, because porn is not benign in that if you have a young kid, now think about it, like you're, you're, I think you're like a couple of years younger than me. Uh-huh. And, but we kind of grew up in that same era where there was internet porn, but the accessibility wasn't, wasn't what as it good. is today. No. I didn't have full accessibility to internet porn until maybe, I think 11th grade is when it became really, really popular. So that would have been 11, maybe 2011 or something like that. Yeah, and it was like, you had to get to that point where you were downloading videos. You had to uh-huh. go on LimeWire. Yeah. There were viruses that came along with it. It's like, maybe you could scrap a load really quick while it pixelates. And, well, you see, know. that's okay. So that brings up a good point too. Cause I remember porn used to be so fucking exciting when you had to go search for the magazine and then you were, you were hovered around the magazine with your friends. Cause it was so exciting. You don't hover around the telephone with your friends. You know, that's not well, like a, the thrill that's of the chase. Like for example, here, one, two, three, four clicks and i've already got porn yeah no no that's it no you just, that's, I, yeah that's unbelievable like mm-hmm. if you go back and told yourself 20 years ago you say that's how close it is to see fucking and sucking it's, <laughs> it's, it's a couple of clicks so this there's so the much future? access to it man people are just they now they can watch whatever they want and so also the porn companies can promote whatever they want because maybe they know maybe they know what people like there's some weird fuckers out there so then you have 16 year olds who have this access that yeah the 16 year olds of today have so much access to it, anything on the internet, but especially blocking systems and a- uh-huh. able to get around that. That's why so they have no personality. Are, well, they have no personality and they don't meet girls. Yeah. And I'm finding out that there are girls who are like throwing themselves at guys now in high school. They're really? just like, take me on a date. Uh, they're asking guys to prom and homecoming and everything huh. because guys are just like, yeah, but I can just go home. And I got tens all over the place. Yeah, you're kind of cute. You're like a six and a half. <laughs> but I got tens at home who were getting just railed up the ass. Yeah, well, not only, yeah, that too. And they probably jacked it the night before. You hear all the time about these boxers and the USC fighters. They don't whack it like two weeks before a fight. You know, yeah. it, it builds up a testosterone. So if they're jacking it every night, they're not going to have that, uh, that subconscious thing to, to go after a woman, you know, like the human nature would allow you to. Well, and, that's, and that keeps you in bad relationships, too. Yeah. That, that's what happened with me. Now, uh, full disclosure, when we're recording this, I'm getting married tomorrow. So, Tony Mazur, making an you. appearance on thank Ski you. Mask Collective the night before he gets married. What a beautiful thing. I, 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 made, I made a few minutes. Out of all the wedding planning and a pandemic and everything, I made, a, I made a few minutes for you. Right. We were going no, over I, your I, speech. I appreciate you be, be having me and stuff. But yeah, the, no, this is great. The, the thing is, I found a girl that... Uh, that is she's a really cool chick because i can do basically anything right like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna have a few beers like i am tonight nice. she'll say oh what, what are you drinking i'm like oh this is a black label it's good stuff she'll be yeah. like, oh can you bring home a six pack 
and it's just like I, that's why I'm marrying you. That's why I love you. <laughs> yeah, the thing it's is, easy I did, I did, I had such a bad picker for so long. I would find these mentally unstable girls that it I, I, they would try to I would try to fix them right. in a way. Not yeah. that I was trying to, but it's like, oh, you're a project. Should I be a part of this? Mm -hmm. And the problem is, you became a stepping stone. Oh yeah, and, and then when I I sit there and I go, why am I doing this? And then I go, should I break up with them? And then I pull open the laptop, just do a little bit of this for a while, and you just go, ah, eh, maybe things will be better now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I yeah. realize if I stop doing that and get my shit together, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I could think clearer. And that's when I <laughs> when I stopped doing that. That's what that's when I met her. So right. I haven't I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I don't need to do no, that. No, I don't. I don't even have. Because I, I was the same way. You know, I used to do it all the time, all the time. I, I went in, uh, I moved back home here for an ex-girlfriend, uh, a girl who I was trying to win back for like four years. Yeah. A disaster, a total disaster. Like you say, I, I was, I wanted to help. Oh, I, here I can, I know you got off on drugs when I was away. Let me get you better. But it just, it was a roller coaster. I became a quick alcoholic. She couldn't quit doing drugs. It's just, it's just a disaster, you know? Yeah. And then it fucked me up for a long time after. And now it's like, I, I don't even know where to start. It's so I, I have a friend of mine who hit, was with a girl for about, I think they've been dating about 10 years. Two years ago, they got engaged. So after all that time of dating, they got engaged. Well, he, uh, he just, they just broke up about a month ago. Oh, wow. Their wedding is supposed to be in like a month. And they broke up. And basically he said, I just haven't loved her for two years. I yeah. just fell out of love with her. And I understand that. But he's 28. And I told him, Dude, you go on Tinder, you go on Bumble and all that. It seems like at the beginning, it, it's, it's supermarket sweep. After. Yeah, it's not. It fucking sucks. It's I hate not. everything about it. <laughs> it seems it's window shopping because then what's going to happen is you're 28, then you're 29, then you're 30, then you're 33. And you realize the only good girls that are out there probably have kids. Yeah. And that, they still yeah. have some mental issues too. Uh -huh. if you're, and also the women who are, who turn, because- Anyone who's ever been in a relationship and has dated a girl who's like anywhere from 25 to 28, they look and go, I'm not married yet and I'm almost 30. My mm -hmm. sister was 30 and had two kids and was married. And here I am, I'm 28 and I don't even have a fucking ring in my They're finger. They're gonna rush, rush into this. And then it starts, it, and then you just go, what's the rush? Uh -huh. What, your biological clock? Are you waiting, are you want kids? Is this what <laughs> it, you want? It you is a natural time. thing though. Like if you, if it's, I think it's scientifically some crazy shit, but they, they start to think that way. You're right. You know, oh, I'm almost 30. Uh, I need to go out. I need to settle down. It's, a, it's for a lot of people who, who didn't develop as young as, as most, you know, and that's or, why or, it, or they thought like, especially women, like guys do this too, but like women will, look at it and say, well, I got to start my career. Well, I'm already in my career and I need to move to another town. Then they get a job every year, every two uh, years. Yeah. And then it just keeps pushing back and back. Yep. And all of a sudden you're 36 years old with dried up ovaries. What do I do? I got to get on Tinder now. No, it, Tinder's fucked up because uh, I've been on it a long time. Like just, I, I just have it, you know, just to have it, whatever you get bored, you swipe it. I'll get in these little relationships. Like I just got out of a, a three month relationship with this girl. And then, so I got back on the Tinder and it's the same girls that were on there before I got in that. So it's, they're all the same people are always on the app. Yeah. I see mm -hmm. it. They're, they're all the, I've seen every single one on there. There's never anybody new and they never meet anybody. So it's like, is it really working? Cause I don't, I don't believe it. It is. It's, no, it's, you're, it's you're setting you up for false failure. Cause you're meeting up with somebody you just based off of looks and then you forget how to go out and talk to people in real life. Like my, a lot of my friends have that problem. I'll, I'll take them out to bars and it's like, dude, go over to the group of chicks and they're, they're scared. You know, they see what's on the TV. It's, they see me too. Exactly. You got to be careful. I mean, so, but even down here in Texas, you don't have to be that fucking careful, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it's not like New York where you go there and you say hi to somebody and she's already saying microaggressions. And I'd say, no, I mean, honestly, there's a, they built a new bowling alley here in town. And uh, this was three months after I quit drinking. This was in, uh, it was like September, October or something. I was there and uh, I said hello to a girl that worked there and uh, she kept bringing us the bowling balls and shit like that. And so I went out to smoke a cigarette and she was, I guess, leaving work or something. So I go back in, no problem. And then, so me and my brother go back the next day and we're sitting at the bar and uh, the security guy walks up to us. He's like, hey, you're making someone that uh, works here feel very uncomfortable. They said you followed her to her car. And I was like, are you, what the fuck? I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I didn't say a word. 
I said hello like 30 minutes prior, went out to smoke a cigarette. I was already out there. She came out and walked by, and then they said, yeah, you're not allowed on these premises anymore. I've since went back, but like, what is that? No. Yeah, like, to think about that happening in the 90s. What the no, fuck? Didn't I didn't, didn't like happen. follow somebody. I was like, pull the tapes, dude. I was like, pull the tapes, and they wouldn't do it. They're just like, no, somebody said you made it feel uncomfortable. You're not allowed here. And, and then they wonder why, and then girls wonder why guys aren't coming up to them at Ex bars. Yeah, no, you, you're, they're scared. Guys, you know? are, guys are afraid, and they don't know what the, they're getting themselves into. And if they get to a, an opportunity where they can meet a girl, and I mean, ultimately, I, I think Tinder is Tinder's fun for the first. I'd never liked it. I've never had a fun time with it. I've, Have you always, ever... met, I've always met, met psychopaths on it. I almost got killed by one in Houston when I was living there. Oh, I, uh, what happened? Well, I, uh, so I, you know, this hot Unless chick. you told this on a previous podcast. I haven't told this story, actually. Okay. She was way out of my league. Uh, so I met up with her at a bar. Our plan was to go get tattoos. So I was drinking heavy at this time. Was just, I was crazy. And uh, anyways, she drink, I, I was drinking doubles. I had a high tolerance. She had the same amount of drinks I had. She got blacked out. So I was like, fuck, I don't, I don't even know where this chick lives. So I got to drive her around. So I just drive her to my dad's house. And I'm like, here, you can sleep in this camper. I'm going to go inside, you know, and I'll check on you, I guess, when you sober up. Well, she starts freaking out because she doesn't know where she's at. She comes to at this point. So I'm like, all right, just tell me where you live. And this is like an hour across town. So we're going down Highway 99. I'm going about 80 miles an hour. And she's like asleep in my front seat. She like, she like wakes up and she jumps over to center console and tries to like straddle me and get on my lap and like start making out. But her ass hits the fucking steering wheel. And so like I'm all over the place. I'm like, whoa. So I have to, you know, physically just push her into the seat. I'm like, please just tell me where you live. You know, it's like two in the morning at this point. She rolls the window down and starts trying to crawl and climb on top of the, uh, the truck while I'm driving. And I'm, you know, I'm still hammered. So I also am scared about getting pulled over. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I finally get her to her house and then she wants to go get cocaine. So I'm like, Jesus, she, she won't get out of the fucking truck at her house. And I, I don't, what do you do at that point? Because as a guy, you're scared. I can't just throw her out. She has my phone number. You know, she could say anything. She could say I did anything to her. So I take her to this cocaine dealer's house. She goes up the stairs. I put the fucking truck in reverse and went home and never looked back. So when I get home, I go to her Twitter account. I finally find her on Twitter shit. Her, like, uh, her background is like a, a guy with, with a slit throat and like blood and shit. I'm like, why, did, why was I so stupid? And then girls get mad at you when you creep on them before the first date. This is fucking why. This is why. Well, it's like, it, you know what's weird about dating nowadays <laughs> because of Tinder is tinder or bumble especially bumble is like a job interview now yeah so it's it used to be hey you look cute oh you look you're cute too you would talk and then you go out for the first date to get to know each other instead it's a job interview in order for there to be a first date i know you know what so the best date i've ever had the best well, date. it was it, during quarantine you know why I didn't have to go anywhere. I invited this chick over for dinner and we ended up dating for three months and it was the greatest ever. Except I'm not, I didn't know this, but you're not supposed to date during your first year of sobriety. So I brought back all those insecurities that drinking did and I fucked it up. Was she drinking or like, are you somebody that you can't be around drinking at all? No, I'm just, I was, a, I was an animal, like a party animal. So like, uh, I never knew when to quit. Like I got a DWI and I, my, my BAC was a 0.39 and I was just fine. You know, it was just like, it was too much. It's so. Oh, wait, wait, a point three? Yeah, point three nine. <laughs> Holy, how are you yeah. alive to do this right now? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm still <laughs> trying to get my hands on the video because they processed it in court. It took six officers to, to take my blood. And uh, cause I didn't, I wasn't going to blow. Oh my God. And then, so I was hoping that the, the whole blood test and shit wouldn't go through. But it, he, if you read about uh, Smith County, the county that I live in down here, it's known for corrupt policies. So I knew I was fucked either way. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, it wasn't that I couldn't, people couldn't be around me. I just didn't know how to act. So like, I, I wasn't an asshole. It would just be nonstop jokes. I wanted to blare music, that kind of thing. Annoying. Yeah. Basically. And it just, it just continues and continues. It, it did. Oh, yeah. It, it, it continued until the point, you know, I was passing out every night on my kitchen floor because it's tile and it would wake up and it would be nice and cold. I took a personal vacation. I had fun for the first time in like five years. I came back and I, I haven't touched a drop since. That was last July. So, you know, I started this. Were you somebody who did uh, like you drink a bunch and then try to get cocaine? I mean, I always had cocaine when I was drinking. That way, oh, I could yeah. keep. That way, I could keep drinking. That's the only well, yeah. reason I did it. Yeah. Well, th but, that's yeah. that's the funny thing people don't realize about cocaine. It's just like 
a lot of people aren't doing it because that's your main drug. No, it's no, no, no. Because <laughs> going through the night. I tried to make it fun uh, since I've been sober. It was like six, seven months ago. I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try that cocaine because I never had a problem with anything. You know, I just knew that I should probably quit drinking. Yeah. So I started fucking around with cocaine and I'd buy a bag and I'd come here and I, I'd, I'd do a couple lines and play Modern Warfare. I'm like, this isn't fun. I'm like, I don't no. You barely feel anything. Your heart's just beating. I'm like, can you take an Adderall and do something fun? And then, uh, so I tried that for a while. I'm like, I, I can't make this fun. It's only fun when you're basically blacked out. So did, did you do completely sober or California sober? What is California? California is, I am sober. I still smoke so much pot though. And I smoke more. Oh pot no, I don't like weed realize, because but... I don't, the reason I don't like weed, I used to smoke a lot in high school, but it, I smoked some uh, like probably two years ago. And it, it just started making me think about all the fucked up shit I, I would do when I would drink, you know? So I was like, I don't like myself. And, the weed just seems like a high school drug anyways. Yeah, I don't, I, but there's so many people that are old, much older now that are just, it's just a thing. Like, because they're, they're children. That's they, what they, it can't, is. they can't go no. anywhere with that. That was, that was the problem with my ex. You couldn't leave the house unless you smoked. And I was like, we got to go. You know, we woke up late. Let's go. And to say that's not an addiction. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you can't get addicted to weed. Like, obviously, you won't get out of bed until you smoke weed. You know? Yeah, it's addicted to the, it's a lifestyle to be addicted yeah. to. That, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. That's the same thing with just, drinking. The whole thing with like weed, it, it, to me, I always feel like if you get to be 30, if you're 40 and you're smoking weed and you don't have like glaucoma, you go, eh, what are you doing? Or if, if you just have something going on, like if you've already done your career, you made your money, you, you got a family, you want to smoke a little weed, fine. Don't be blatant about it. That's what, that's what I can't stand is people who are just so up in your face about the shit. I can't stand that with anything. But the weed is such, it's so new that when people get in your face about it now, it's like, what? No, but That's to answer your question, I did the, the completely sober, you know, I just quit drinking overnight. And then, uh, you know, I'd fiddle, I fiddle with some cocaine like six months after that and some Adderall. What was your and poison? What do, you, what, what do you mean? Like my favorite drink? Yeah. Like were you uh, beer, were you liquor? Okay. You so I would, I would drink a bottle of vodka every night and then I would, ch I would always chase the, you know, shooters with beer so i always had a 30 pack you know that's why i got this joke about how eat how much easier it is to shop for groceries when you're an alcoholic you just go in and get a 30 pack and a thing of beef jerky you're good to go now you gotta have a whole cart and get it up your fucking second story it's a pain but yeah no i was just vodka and, and beer at the end uh one thing i the one liquor i couldn't drink was gin because every time i drank it and i started drinking gin in high school if i fell asleep with my jeans on i'd piss my pants no matter what <laughs> No, no jeans, no, no piss pants, but all my friends have many stories about me drinking gin and just pissing everywhere. <laughs> I, the one that, and I'm not looking forward to this because uh, getting married, what's the big thing you want to celebrate is champagne. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I started getting into champagne a couple of years ago as being like, not just fancy, but I know it can get me fucked up quicker. Yeah, the bubbly. It's easy to drink, man. It goes right down the hatch. Right down. And there, there's a bar in uh, Columbus, Ohio uh, that uh, my brother used to work at. And they, would have, they would just give, they wouldn't give you a flute of champagne. They would give you a full <laughs> bottle. And you'd Hell see yeah. people all across the bar. It was like barefoot bubbly. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like barefoot or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it was ten dollars. And I'm just going there and I'm just like, okay, it's not really classy, but hey, bottoms up. And I realized I drank like four or five bottles of champagne. Yeah. And I'm I'm hung over the next day to the point where I felt like I needed to call a scientist <laughs> to find out what the fuck is wrong with me. Like I, I had never been I, New Year's I, it was the last time I drank any champagne. And it was and I didn't really think I had that much. And I woke up the next day at a, a friend's apartment and i woke up and i'm like i'm fine you know kind of hung over but that's okay and then i smelled his neighbor cooking breakfast uh -huh. and it stunk so bad Ooh. i don't know what it was it could, it could just been bacon and eggs it's probably but potatoes it, and bacon grease oh, fuck. It, made me, it made me so ill the whole <laughs> next day i mean i i was throwing up foam at wow that. do you yeah. would you throw do you throw up a lot from being hung over no no usually i i my body fights vomit. Right. I feel like yeah, yeah, me too. But, it's, but it's that feeling where it's just like, no, you shouldn't vomit because that means you're telling everyone you're sick. Maybe I should just keep it in there. Yeah, 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 exactly. But like I have buddies of mine, they're like, just throw up and then you'll be able to drink more. And I'm like, no, if I throw up, then. I would know, do that to, to, to be funny. I think the only time I ever fucked myself up, uh, I drank, we were drinking Bacardi 151 for about a week. Me and my brother were get, just getting a bottle of that every day. And I basically burned holes in my stomach. Cause I mean, you can light the shit on fire. 
Yeah. I didn't realize that. I mean, I woke up one day and I was like, what the fuck? And like, it was just flames, man. I was like, this is crazy. Couldn't think straight. That was the last time I drank that stuff. One of the worst hangovers I had was at, uh, it was about 10 years ago. It was on Halloween and I, I was going through like a really bad depression and uh, couldn't find a job and it, it just felt like a fucking loser. And I was at a buddy's <laughs> house and he had a bunch of Bud Light and it's just Bud Light. Oh. But before then, I had, I, I had to work, I had to work one job and I was covering a, a Cavs game, a basketball game. So I didn't really eat much. So I had some chili. And it was like leftover chili, like at my parents' house. I'm like, all right. I'll just have a bowl. <laughs> so fast forward about maybe 10 hours later, I go to this party and I'm just, for whatever reason, I was drinking Bud Light and it was going down like it was water. It was like sweet yeah. nectar. And I'm just like, drink it, throw it over my shoulder. <laughs> uh, I ended up drinking 13 Bud Lights in about an 45 minutes yeah I'm not yeah. I mean, no I, I know you're not I know I know yeah right down and I was probably 22 at the time and it was just like no I'm fine I'll just keep drinking and then I'm out in the yard we go to the bonfire we're about to smoke cigars and it just boom just hit me Ugh. and I'm and I'm like oh god I don't know I feel like shit and someone's <laughs> like dude you, dude you have to you have to eat something. You probably should get something in your system. I'm like, yeah, I probably should. What do you got? And he's like, well, we have some chili. We got more chili. Uh, <laughs> the chili I had 12 hours earlier all over the yeah. floor. And the next thing I know, I wake up, I'm sleeping in the bathtub. So, mm. yeah. yeah. That's funny you say that because I, I physically remember my worst hangover ever was from Bud Light too. It was right when I started drinking around that time. Same thing. I had probably about 15 Bud Lights and, uh, Boy, that was a headache. I remember exactly how it felt. I was at a lake house. It hurt. It was the, was it, now, were you a cheap beer person or did you get into the craft beer? I, I mean, I, I, I had a phase with the craft beer, but no. When it came down to it, man, I did a 30-pack of Bush would do me just fine. It's, it, it, honestly, I like it better than the Bud Light and Budweiser. It's filtered more. Uh, and plus, when you're shotgunning and doing your chugs, it goes down easier. You know? Yeah. Uh, that's I what I like. I, for a while, I did the craft beer. I still drink it every now and then. I had one earlier tonight before yeah. I came on here. But it, the craft beer was just more so I wanted to taste something. This is just, I mean, I'm drinking this black label. Just It's just something to drink. It's to get, right. get you drunk or buzzed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, that, like something you would drink when you get home from a, from a day at the office. But that's why I love Florentine's take on it. Because I would never go out and, and order a craft beer. If I was drinking craft beer, I'd buy it at the store. And I'd come home and, and, and chill. and not take pictures of it you know what i mean so it's just like it became that whole thing and then i finally like something in my head was just like i don't even want to buy it at the store now you know just give it a bush let's go you mentioned florentine by the way because i've i've gotten to know florentine for a while really and yeah. i've i probably have opened i'm trying to think of the best comics that i've opened for but like florentine was the comic i opened for probably the most next to Next to Dave Landau and Rich Voss. Oh, wow. Um, because, and they've come to, we have a small comedy club uh, not far from here called The Funny Stop. And uh, so the owner, because of me, and I was able, so a couple of years ago, I did bring in, uh, we're, Chad and I were able to get Kevin Brennan to come to The Funny Stop. <laughs> And it, it took, I would say it took about two years for this to happen, but we made it happen. And Kevin's part of the comedy club. Uh, <laughs> both, both because the comedy club, uh, Pete, who's a Lebanese guy that you can barely understand, but mm -hmm. he's, he's fantastic. It's just he, you don't like him at first, but then you realize you really like him. And uh, Voss, Voss loves Pete. Uh, there's, a, there's a funny Pete story. So Pete has this thick accent and you can <laughs> very tell what, what he says. So Florentine's like, he tells Otto from Otto and George when he was still alive, says, hey, you got to go on, uh, you got to go to the funny stop in Cuyahoga Falls. It's one of the great clubs. It's a B room. It's fantastic. You're going to love Pete. So Pete, so Pete calls up Otto and goes, hello, is it Otto Peterson? It is Pete from the funny stop. And Otto's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> get, get off, you motherfucker. And he, he, he hangs up. And then Pete calls him back and says, nobody fucking hang up. You don't go to play. You're not going to play at my fucking club. You're not going to oh happen. God. And then we weren't able to get Otto there. because Otto. Wow. We <laughs> thought the whole thing. You, they probably tease him so much with the accent. And, and, and Florentine's probably so good at it. He, he, thought, like, he thought it was like Florentine. Yeah, yeah, he thought it was Florentine or Don Jameson doing one of the, uh, the, <laughs> uh, the crank calls and everything. But, yeah. Uh, 
Florentine, I, I got to say, for people who, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who, who watch you and listen to you also like Florentine. Oh, yeah. He's the most genuine guy it, that I've met in the business where if you meet Jim Florentine, now you listen to his podcast and he hates everything. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, but you know, if you know, if you know Florentine, here. you know beyond that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, but you can tell it's just like he's a, he's an, but he's not an angry guy. It's just, no, that's why I love watching his stand up. Like he's one of the only guys I could watch do stand up on the TV, you know? Yeah. It, Cause it, I mean, it, yeah, I can actually enjoy off, watching him. Yeah. It, things will piss him off, but he's not an angry guy. Oh yeah. He's just, he's just telling facts and it's probably a lot of the way that guys think or we're born to think, but they've been trained otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, he really is a great guy. Don Jamison's a good guy, too. Yeah, I've always loved um, those guys, man. I've been following them forever. My little brother is a huge fan of Florentine. We, we were able to get a lot of these guys. It was funny because when we got Kevin Brennan to come to the funny stuff, uh, I, I met Colin Quinn. And uh, I was telling Colin, I said, hey, Colin, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm doing a weekend with Kevin Brennan coming up. And he says, Kevin Brennan is the most genuine, funniest guy that you're going to meet. He's like, what, what he is on his podcast is who he is in real life. And right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's what I love about him because yeah. Kevin's the guy that he was a club comic. And it's funny because there's so many of those guys that were club comics that weren't necessarily a huge name. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, if you would go to your local comedy club, wherever you're watching this from. So if you're from New York or you're from, Tulsa, Oklahoma, there's a comedy club in your town. And you would look at the lineup of comics coming and say, Oh, Bobby Lee. Yeah, that's right. He's from Mad TV. And right, right, right. Uh, let's see. Oh, Norm MacDonald's coming. Oh, I love Ooh, Norm. Big no. name. And then you would see other comics that you really wouldn't yeah. recognize. And you would say, Oh, John Reith. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Kev Kevin Brennan. Ah, I'm not sure who that is. And the only way you would go see Kevin is that you would get free tickets on a Thursday. And it's right. no offense to Kevin. It's that's just, not. It's just the way it was. And the business has changed so much that if a name like Kevin Brennan, oh, you sound like an older white man, you're not going to be able to get on stage anytime. <laughs> you're not trans. You're not Muslim. Yeah. You're not black or gay. Then sorry, we don't have time for you on Comedy Central. Yeah, or exactly. Or they, now you can just go to the YouTube and look up his act 10 years ago and judge somebody on that now. It's like, come on, man. What the fuck? Yeah, it's awful. It's, yeah. So it's, it's, but those comics uh, that I, I've gotten a chance to know, I've gone to Compound. I went to New York a few times to go to sit in the audience for Gino and Aaron and uh, Anthony Cumia. Right. I got to meet Anthony in, in 2006. Yeah. And Opie, Anthony, Norton, and Rich Voss were performing at the uh, Opie and Anthony Traveling Virus Comedy Tour. <laughs> so they, they did three shows on the East Coast. It was like Philly, New York, and Boston. And then they added a fourth one in Cleveland. And it was like a scaled back version because there were other comics that were at the mm -hmm. other shows like Bob Saget, Louis C.K., and Larry the Cable Guy. Scaled so, back. <laughs> so, they, so they ended up having only a few comics, but it was the main guys. So it was Voss opened the show. Then it was Patrice O'Neill, Otto oh. and George. Then there was a, a break where Opie and Anthony came out for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Then, then it was Bobby Kelly. And then this guy that – Ended up being, I don't know whatever happened to him, named uh, Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. Now, this was two weeks after the infamous Bill Burr Philly rant. Mm. And so, <laughs> Bill, so Bill, Bill rips on Philadelphia, everyone from the Rocky statue. He said, I hope Donovan McNabb blows his both of his <laughs> knees out. And you, you faggot Philly uniform. <laughs> you know, fuck you. Eight minutes left. You got me for eight minutes. And Burr's just going off on Philadelphia. Oh my God. Well, what happened is two weeks later, he's in Cleveland. And as soon as they said, all right, let's welcome to the stage, Bill Burr. And people start booing him because they want him to do a Cleveland rant. Oh. And Burr just goes, no, I'm not going to do this. He didn't want to be the, oh, I'm going to, I need to come up with a rant for every city to go into. And to Bill's credit, he walked off stage. Oh, wow. Wow. So, so he wouldn't even do, do anything. He did probably six minutes out of like 15 that he was supposed to Damn. do. Damn. Yeah, it, it sucked. And then Opie and Anthony had to say, you guys don't know what you just did See, to Bill Burr right there. Think about, think about that for a second. Think about that lineup for a minute. Do you think anything like that? It's ever going to be created again. I mean, to see like a show with better. those names on it, it's just like, holy shit, you know? It's, if, if that show was to get booked today, it would be huge. huge. Well, it's, it's the, well that, that's what made Opie and Anthony great. It was, it was a hang for these comics. Yeah. 
you may not have necessarily even liked their stand-up material, but they were good on the show. There's that plenty was, of guys like that for, for me who I love hearing on podcasts and things, but, you know, I like wouldn't. Chris D'Elia? Like Chris D'Elia? No, I don't know. I, <laughs> no. Chris I'm not gonna, I'll, <laughs> I'll say this about Chris D'Elia. He's a better podcast guest than he is a stand-up. Yeah, yeah. And that's not really saying much. Right. See, I made, I made this dumb, I made a dumb joke uh, a few months ago about it the whole thing. Cause for me, you know, I was explaining, I was at a party and uh, there's loud rap music going. Everybody was getting fucked up. And it's the drunk girls. Like I want to hear Chris D'Elia, put him on the TV. And they're like, like, no, we don't need to hear stand up right now. Everybody's partying. And she's like, why? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, he's a little creepy. Right. You see the show he just did. And she's like, you're just mad. Cause you're not funnier than her, him, whatever. And I was like, no, look, I mean, think about it like this. Okay. You see any com big comedian in any movie, you never really think about them as the character that they're portraying in that movie. So like you see Kevin Hart in a movie, like, oh, he's just doing Kevin Hart in another movie. Yeah. So I made the joke. I was like, same thing with Chris D'Elia. That's why everybody's ranting and raving about how good he is in that show, you know, because it's just, it's, he's just playing himself. He's just showing up talking and having a good time. I love these comedy stories where people just find out about him now, like Louie. Like it took <laughs> 2017 for people to hear about Louie jerking off in front of women. What is, yeah, what is that? Comedy. I wasn't even in comedy at the time, and I had heard that story probably in like '06. Yeah, I remember the first time I heard it. I didn't think anything of it, and then it, it blows up. I'm like, "What? It's it's not even uh, okay." First of all, nothing nothing happening is illegal, right? No, is, it, is, well, is anything that's happening illegal? No, he's, he consented. He asked these girls exactly. I jerk off in front of you. I know guys who have done okay. ten times worse, and they're just fine, <laughs> and they're not threatening. Like there's, there's creepy celebrity. Like I saw a story, this is alleged because I saw it on Reddit. Alleged. 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 It was John Mayer's one of these guys. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah. We'll take a girl home after a show, allegedly. And instead of fucking her, he just jerks off on her and then he leaves. <laughs> now, if I were, if I were that girl, I'd just take some of that cum and just, just, yeah, put just, just rub it in, rub it in. <laughs> See, I mean, see, I think guys get like that probably, though. If, if they can get any woman they want or just constant women getting thrown on them, they're like, what? Are, you know, they start getting into some weirder shit, right? They get bored. They get right? bored. It's like, it's like the story with David Bowie and Mick Jagger fucking. Yeah. That was, that was the whole thing because, like, if, if it's 1968 and you're Mick Jagger, you get any woman that's thrown at you. Yeah. Well, what's the, the thrill of the chase? I've heard that about Prince, too. The Prince yeah, is yeah. like... Yeah, you know, I could get any woman. I also get a couple of guys, too. Yeah, a couple of fellas in here. Their, and I have to deal with their bullshit conversation. After right, hey, it's Tuesday. Bring in the fellas. No ladies allowed. We're that's, ordering that's, pizza. That's an old Bob, Bob Kelly joke where he says, oh, God, I wish I were gay, They're, where I could just make out with my friend and watch football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Bobby Kelly. He's so funny to me, man. He's another one of those guys that he grew on a lot of people. Yeah, no, say, yeah, same for me. When I first heard about him, I was not a fan. I can I fully admit that. I was I like, that was Burr. Huh? That took, it took me about two years to really like Bill Burr. Really? Because I was just like, because him and Anthony would kind of go back and forth. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, that whole thing. Political and everything. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, this guy's really, really funny. Right. But it was because of the podcasting and, uh, and because of uh, Opie and Anthony that they got to showcase that side of their personality. Like mm -hmm. they would rip on Rich Voss, but to Opie's credit, Opie would say, no, seriously, go see Rich Voss. He's a great comic. We rip on him. We call him stupid or retarded <laughs> on the show, uh, but he's a great comic and he is. Yeah. He's yeah. Great, I mean, he's got comic. a lot of credits. It's, he's actually, yeah, you're right. He's one of those comics that anytime I hear him on, on Bobby's show, I, it, it makes me laugh. At first, I, when I heard him on Bobby's show, I'd be like, oh, you know, let me try out this other episode. And I ran out and I had to listen to the Voss episodes. I'm like, this guy's all right. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's good. Like he's not stupid when he's trying to make a point and pontificating. But when he's on stage, I've seen him go up there with no material. He oh, has wow. zero yeah. material and just uh, starts ripping. So he'll rip on somebody in the third row, two minutes into the <laughs> performance. And 48 minutes later, he references that same girl mm -hmm. in the third row that he talked about two, the, two minute mark. I think that's so rare these days, man. And it's not, it's not something you can see. Like, like you say, he goes up with no material. It's that, I mean, that used to be a thing when people could, could be, have more imagination. They didn't have all the phones and sucked up in the modern life and technology. They were able to, to 
walk down the street and, and, and look forward, not, you know, not down at the sidewalk. It's, it sounds There's like some it. comics who can still do that. And one of them is, there Big is, Big but Big it's Jay is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I saw big J in Pittsburgh and he went up there and it was like, I think it was like two or three days after his uh, comedy central special came out. So he just goes on stage. He sits there. He's got his gloves on and uh, he's like, got, he's sitting on the stool and he's like, I really don't have any new material because you just saw it three days ago on TV. And he just does an hour on stage of just crowd work. And it was that, great. Yeah. They did that whole crowd work special thing too. That, yeah, there's, these, yeah. Some of these guys are really good. When you talk about uh, like the Legion of Skanks guys, they're, they're solid comics too. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. and, and the thing is with compound media, why I continue on and, still enjoy listening it, no matter how many times they've had the you know i like i was trying to watch Kumia yesterday and I, I could only see about 15 minutes of it right the, the internet was There's down so much there. going on over there we need to get to the bottom of but they they really introduced me to a lot of different people they, they introduced like, me to, to everybody that i i know you know throughout the industry you know that started as my first chain link was anthony show Mm -hmm. And I watched the other shows and then I had seen all of Anthony's previous episodes. I was like, what else is on this network? I saw burning bridges. He was live. It said, call in. I called in. And then from there on out, I was like, I like this Kevin Brennan guy. And then uh, this whole thing started. So that was like four years ago. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Two. Yeah. And uh, he, he's been doing it since 2014. And I mm -hmm. remember I, I signed on, I was, uh, I think the first day he put it up there. I've been a subscriber ever since. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, he's got good shows. He's got some not very good shows. Right, right. But it's different tastes. So, like, I know, I know Kevin is not a Bill Schultz guy. <laughs> and, and honestly, that, that show's not for me. Right, right. Bill, Bill is a, Bill's a fun dude. Yeah. And Joanne, Joanne is even better at looking in person. Yeah, I, I, I could see how that's possible because sometimes I'm like, how is, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> we, uh, when I went up there and I saw Joanne, she, I, don't, I don't even think she had makeup on. She was like writing notes or she was on her laptop. I forget what it was. And I look, I'm like, she's, she's like the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. And she's a cool chick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's on the compound. You can't not be cool at going to compound media. This is the way it is. And she can hang with the guys. And yeah. that's, that's the thing. It's like, it, even though morning may not be the greatest show in the world, but there are people who may not be a lot of people, but there are people who do check out the show. Right, right. And there is. you can't just have every show being a bunch of I, <laughs> lunatics. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to say toxic masculinity here. No, by you all means. You just can't have bros like this show is a, a, just like that show that's just like that show. You got to yeah. kind of mix it up a little bit. So that's why Gino and Aaron are a little different compared to Tlaib Starks and Michael Malice. Right. I tell you and, what, I, I really enjoy that fair one, uh, fair one show. I've, I've seen every episode of that, you know, especially when Gillis was on there. I, mm -hmm. I became, I was a Shane Gillis fan the second episode of that, that fair one. And I would tell all my friends about him, like, who, who? Then he finally, now you know what happened. And you know, my friends are like, isn't that the guy you were telling or you were calling? And I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, the, the, he got fired from SNL the day I was up there at Compound. Oh, wow, really? I found out about that. That's when, that's when I, I was in the audience for In Hot Water. So, because <laughs> uh, we, the, the Browns, the Cleveland Browns were in town to face the Jets. And so, I, and I have friends in New York. So you we're got like, free oh, tickets? No, no. Oh, I thought everybody got free tickets to that game. Well, they should have. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I paid 70 bucks to sit in the upper deck. And oh, boy. But that was one of those cases, by the way. We go up there to uh, on that Monday morning. Uh, Gino had just gotten back from, an, from a weekend at a cabin with Alex Engelbert. Woo! <laughs> but he was fired up. <laughs> and or then, was he sleeping? <laughs> uh, well, no, we drank. We yeah. drank. Uh, we went. Uh, so, because I knew Gino liked... Uh, uh, what, was it was a Budweiser and no, I was Coors. So I got a bunch of Coors and then we just had a bunch of Jameson. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my fiance, who is, well, I'm going to say my wife tomorrow, because she likes the show. She loves In Hot Water. Oh, really? That's awesome. So that, again, that's why I'm marrying her. Yeah. So she, we'll sit there and we'll watch In Hot Water on the TV. And so we're in the audience and that's when we find, and then Aaron just kept saying chink the whole, whole show because <laughs> of the Shane Gillis thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterward, we went across the street with Gino and went to uh, Sullivan's. Of course. I want to go to Sullivan's so bad just because of all the stories, you know, on the shows. It's like, I want to go to, I'm going to go to In Hot Water and meet up with Gino. I'm going to go hang out at Sullivan's. Yeah, we were hanging out there. And Gino pays for everything, by the way, between you and me. Right? Oh, I've seen him do it. Yeah, he, 
He'll pay, he'll pay for it. Oh, no, that's right. You guys, you saw him at the In Hot Water in Texas, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Smoked some cigars what, with those guys. What did you think of Gino's material on stage? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew what he was about. Um, and I knew that he could carry an act. So it was like, it was one of those things where uh, he, it was his first night back drinking. He was allowed to drink, I think. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, so he went up there and basically just berated the audience. And it was, it was the Gino that I know. So I was like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. And, oh. you know, he's, he's drinking, uh, he's taking shots. He's throwing the glasses behind him. The poor waitress is like coming in the front row to pick up the glasses and refill them with more shots. And it's just, it was wild. It was a lot of now, fun. Now let, me, let me guess, he, uh, how many times did he say the word faggot? A lot. He said that word a lot. He emphasized did, that it's with a PH, but he did say it a lot. Well, of course. Did, did, did he have, did he have the, a certain word that has two Gs in the middle of it, too? Well, of, no, he, no, you know what? He did not use that word. He became very close, but he did not. He, he did it a couple of times in Cleveland did with, he? Uh, with uh, Larry Bay. He must have been hammered. Yeah, he was pretty drunk. <laughs> he was, now, uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a couple in the audience. The, the man was much older, so he was having a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And how good is Aaron? Aaron is great because he, get, he, he went up there after Gino. Because, you know, when I was sitting there watching Gino's act, I'm like, why would anybody want to follow this? You know, it's just like what? Like he just went up there and acted crazy. And then Aaron goes up and sits on the stool, starts talking. It's quiet. And then next thing you know, the room's just howling in laughter. Now, were these mostly in hot water fans? In no, no uh, there was uh, me and maybe four other guys who, you know, watched the in hot water. The rest were just, uh, I guess, people in town who stopped by and saw that the comedy show was going on. Because if you, it depends on the audience, because when I saw Gino do his act, and Gino's, Gino's act really hasn't changed much. He doesn't have, you know, he, know, does, the Anne, he yeah. does the Anne Frank joke and everything, and he does a bunch of things. But if you are not a Gino and Aaron fan, you don't really get what he's trying to do. Like, mm -hmm. he tries to make this all into a monologue. He's like, everybody's so PC, even, even this faggot over here. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's his act. And if you, don't, if you aren't in on it, you just think he's just some loudmouth. <laughs> but I saw him, I saw him at uh, one of the uh, compound uh, comedians of the compound shows because I went to the White Plains Comedy Club back in December and I got to see all of them. Uh, um, Dave Landau is the one who, he opened the show and Dave just kills. Oh yeah, I saw Dave uh, in Seattle last year. It was actually on that trip that I took whenever he, I was getting and sober. I, and God, is he, it was so much fun. Dave is, Dave is as close to a Dave Attell is a guy that you've heard the jokes before and they somehow get funnier. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing, that's the one thing about stand-up is stand-up is one of those cases where, unlike music, if you go see ACDC and they don't play Thunderstruck or Back in Black, you're pissed off if you're an <laughs> But if you go see a comedian, you say, oh, I already heard this. Where's your new stuff? And that's what's always weird. So Dave's a guy that I've seen – I've I've opened for Dave every time he's been through town – and more so. So I've probably seen Dave about 10 times. And most of those times are the same material. And it uh -huh. gets funnier. Yeah. Yeah. He gave, I, like, I like Dave because he's so relaxed up there when he's talking about something that's so fucked up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, that's what makes it great. He's just like calmly talking about it. And then he'll roll over the punchline. It's like, holy shit, that was great. You know? But what was, makes Dave interesting is his background and everything – you don't realize, like, he's just a normal guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why whenever I, I, I first heard about him on Anthony's show, I had no idea who he was. And uh, that's what made me become a fan of his. And uh, actually, you know, I used to text, uh, I, did, I would DM him back in the day, ask him, like, you know, hey, man, what do I got to do? I'm tired of this lifestyle. And he would give me uh, tips and pointers and stuff, which really helped, which really helped a lot. That's great. I mean, he's Dave's a guy. He's a that, very ins inspirational with those stories, you know, because I'm like, this sounds like me. <laughs> but if you don't know him, you would think he's just a normal guy. He's a husband and a father. Yeah. And then until you realize, it's like, oh, wait a second. Mm -hmm. You're more messed up than any one of us right now. <laughs> and he's, so he opened that show because I think it was right before Christmas. So he was going to Detroit, going back home for a couple of weeks. And so he opened the show and had to take a flight. And then I think it was Pat Dixon went up. And Pat was great. I had never seen Pat before. And he was really good. And then 
uh, Christy Mayer came up there and I had never seen Christy and she did a great job too. <laughs> now that's like her home club. Yeah. Cause, right. cause uh, her boyfriend is the manager there, but I was surprised because Christy is a, Christy's like an improv actress, I believe. She was an improv actress who ended up getting into stand up because improv sucks. Yeah, I mean, what are you, you going to go from there? There's an improv show here in town. It's been the same 20 years. Improv, improv is fun if you're doing improv. Yeah. If you're in the audience for improv, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing for me. But, but like, if you're in comedy, <laughs> you wanted to do improv at one point because you think it's fun and it's fun to do, but it, all you're doing is entertaining each other. It's like you're telling inside jokes, but then the audience isn't in on the inside joke. Yeah. So that's right. So that's what always, that's what drew me to Artie Lang's podcast is when he would go, that was always my favorite moment of those shows when he would just do improv to himself. He would yeah. just literally sit there and just, and just make up this long like story that just started. And the next thing you know, you're 40 minutes into this thing. There's so many characters going on. And he's still just rambling. I, was, I always thought that was the greatest shit ever. Is it true Artie got arrested recently? I don't know. Look, a hit piece was put out on YouTube about that. Uh, going through some of the comments and some of the history, I'm not fully believing that. Uh, I don't know what happened to Artie Lang right now. And some of the fans are supposed to be helping me get to the bottom of it. But I'd it, really like to The know. only thing I can know, the only intel that I was able to gather – was he hasn't been handling the quarantine that well uh -huh. but i don't know if that's because he's been on drugs or if he's just gotten into a depression i guess there was somebody he was in rehab with recently it passed away uh -huh. and he took it really hard I oh think. wow so See, that's what i maybe that's the only thing i know maybe something like that did happen because everybody knows already has a huge heart uh but you know in the past he would never go this long without at least putting a tweet out saying don't worry to the fans or having Dan Filato put a tweet out something. Uh, and it's just, it's, it comes at a weird time when he was just launching a, not only a podcast, but a little bit of a network. He was super excited about the shows were going good. And then it just like, it no, what happened? Time just started going by and we're like, where's Lang? You know, it's not, there's no, there's no answers at this point. So that's what freaks me out about it. And I was thinking about it this morning, man. What do you think? Do you think it's more fucked up if Lang is dead or if he is in jail having to go through those withdrawals? Oh, God, I couldn't imagine. I mean, what I mean, would be worse? I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, is it fucked up to say? Like, I, would, I can't imagine him going through withdrawals in jail. Uh, Artie, Artie should have died 25 years ago. Yeah. And there, yeah. There's but he's a living legend. He keeps outliving everyone. You know, that was the intro to his podcast. He was going to outlive uh, – or Joan Rivers was going to outlive him. That yeah. didn't happen. <laughs> Bill Hicks died at 32 yeah. from, from pancreatic cancer, and his legacy lives on. The, the problem with Artie, and I love Artie, but Artie's one, of, and I see this with a lot of comics who do this, that they're a comic first and a radio guy slash podcast guy second. And yeah. I got to say, I've seen Artie before. Not impressed with the stand-up. Yeah, I've heard that. You're not the first person I've heard that from. He, there say. are certain guys that just, but like old school, I, I don't want to say old school comics, but I think comics that came out of the, like the late eighties, like the post comedy boom and into the nineties, they were, they're comics that you can't tell them that they're better on radio or podcasts because that's like insulting to them. Yeah. You know, doing a podcast just because, uh, you know, it's something I have to do, but in reality, they're a better podcaster. Yeah. Uh, there are certain people. Now I'll say this. When I got to see Kevin Brennan do his show live, I realized, I'm like, I don't know what he's better at, <laughs> podcast or, or anything. I knew when I saw Artie Lang, oh my God. So I saw Artie about four years ago and yeah, about four, almost five years ago. And this was the infamous Pittsburgh show where he talks about the broken glass. Ooh. Now, he said St. Louis, but I know that uh, this is Pittsburgh, so. <laughs> Did it happen twice? Oh, yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. And this, <laughs> is, this is a case, and I saw this with my own eyes. So my, my rule of thumb is to go, if I'm going to go see a comic and they have two shows, I go to the second show. Right, uh, yeah, I'm the same way. You don't go to the first show. The second show is what you got to do. And so I'm like, all right, so my girlfriend at the time, we went, to, we went out to dinner and we were somewhere in Pittsburgh, and. So let's go to the second Artie Lang show. So I bought tickets and 
we sit down. She's checking in on Foursquare or whatever fucking app that was <laughs> at the time. Like, oh my god, hey, the comedy club. It's Artie Lane for Stern yeah. shows here. Yeah, he's so great. I heard he's so, so funny. funny. Here's a great clip of him right here. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like about to tag him, going to see Artie at Artie Quitter on Twitter, and she looks and. His last tweet was, I'm so sorry, Pittsburgh. Oh. Uh, I'll make it up to you. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, boy. I'm like, they, they, I'm like, they better give us our money back or cancel the show right now. Yeah. The, the whole like, audience is just sitting there. So I'm looking around, and I, and so I ask one of the servers, I'm like, is, is there going to be a show tonight? And they're like, why wouldn't there be? I'm like, oh, God. So then I'm like, they can't go on if Art, I mean, if he's apologizing, that means he did something in the first show. And it wasn't very good. And all of a sudden, the lights go out, and they bring up the comics, and you know the opener and the the middle act and everything. And they say, "All right, you remember it from the Artie Artie Lang show with Nick DiPaolo, and you remember it from the Howard Stern show? It's Artie Lang. He comes on stage. He's got a hat. He's got a Yankee hat on backwards. He's wearing a pair of dirty Adidas <laughs> sweatpants. <laughs> and he goes on stage, and he's he's bloated. His hair like oh people, my like, god." They had, Artie in a while yeah and his hairy just it just looked awful and he, he's up at the microphone and he's like mumbling hey, you know, you know I, was, hey. I was dead and i was working in the ports and whatever pack of smokes <laughs> that's funnier than what he actually came out with. <laughs> and it was like one of those where it's just like was it sad was it just sad sitting there was, seeing that it was sad but what was the thing was everybody in the audience is an Artie fan you're yeah. not there because you won tickets off the radio. Yeah, you saw Artie laying on the marquee, or you even knew prior to that that he was going to be in town, and you were first to buy tickets, you know? And everybody knows his faults. Everybody knows Artie's a fuck-up, and they know he's on drugs, and, and he's cut himself. He's tried to kill himself a few yeah. times, everything. Everybody knows his faults. So the crowd's giving him a, a, an opportunity that they wouldn't give another comic. Of course, yes, absolutely. And he's just, I mean, it's... It, it's like you're it's like you're on a bike and you're going uphill yeah. and it's just whew. see why and, and is it's just nothing what is it about Artie lang you know no matter what the fuck he does everybody still just is so supportive of him you know he's, he's one of those guys he's one of those guys who just can't he can't turn his fans against him or or have his fans drop off even if his fans knew he was going to be like that at the, on the show, I think they'd still buy tickets, you know? He was, well, it's because he was a fan of Howard before he was on the show. Right. So he got the show. So when Jackie left in 01, and there were it, Florentine, Adam Carolla, Jimmy Kimmel, Doug Stanhope, they all tried out for that spot. Artie went in there and it worked because he knew the show. Yes. They didn't have to. They didn't have to bring someone up and change the direction of the show. Now, now the direction of the show changed a little bit, but that's because Artie was so good on it. Made the show better. Out. Those are the best years, in my opinion. And those, and those were the times where fans that were listening are just like, we love the guy. We know he has his fault. So let's give him an opportunity. Yeah. So Artie, now we're 20 minutes into this comedy show and hasn't told one funny thing. <laughs> but the fans are pity laughing. And it's sad. Yeah. Then, he, then all of a sudden, he gets one good laugh on something he said and then people are like all right he's back in and then it went back downhill again. oh it did it did oh, and it just and then he starts singing a song what that he was one of the first jokes he wrote and you've probably heard him tell this joke and tell the story that one of the first things was instead of the show cheers it was queers <laughs> and he starts singing where everybody knows you're gay yeah 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 how could you uh, not know it's like what and I'm like, I'm like, and I, I leaned over to my girlfriend. And I'm like, this is a 25 year old joke he's telling right now. Not only that, I think that's, isn't that the kind of joke that works better on the radio and not. Yeah. Like, that you can uh, lampoon and make fun of yes, for thinking that. Yes. And, and so what happens is his nose starts bleeding as he's oh doing it. God. And it's, it's dripping onto his shirt. So he gets done with the queer song <laughs> and you know how after, after you hang out after the show and everyone gets a picture, you get an autograph, everything. I saw two guys lift him up out of the club, <laughs> throw him in a van. And I'm like, well, he's probably going to a rehab right now, which he did. Oh, he'll wow. tell, he told the story. He's like, yeah, I, yeah, I got done doing a show in Pittsburgh and uh, my nose was bleeding. They <sighs> sent me right to a yeah. rehab. I was, I was snorting glass. <laughs> and, uh, uh, do you think uh, that? Hear about Tony Curtis? <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you think his pants were actually dirty or do you think it was dried blood? It could have been. You know, yeah, fuck. Been dried blood or it could have been dried cum. I don't know. Oh, hey. I didn't look that close. Who knows what Artie was doing? How was he getting his hands on the drugs? All right, Tony, you're getting married tomorrow. Are you excited? Do you feel like it's a big step or no? Do you feel like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready, man. I'm ready I'm for ready. this. You ready I'm for ready. this? Yeah. yeah. I've, I, First you know. time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Good, good deal. No, I, I've been nervous lots of times. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old <laughs> Um No, I'm looking forward to it because, and people are like, oh, you know, why get married and everything? It's like, you know, though, man, you got a chick who watches in hot water. You just know sometimes. Shit. I'll, 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 t- I'll tell you two reasons why I knew I had to start settling down and get married. When I was single and I was doing the Tinder thing, there was one. Uh, one of them was I went out with a girl who was born in 1996. Oh. <laughs> so at the time, she was 20 and I was 20, 28. And I'm sitting there at a restaurant. You were annoyed. You got annoyed. She didn't know anything. Oh, yeah, she, I was trying to make conversation with this girl. It's, and it's hard. Just, like, she's looking at her phone. Yeah. Like, oh, what do you do? It's like, oh, I got my communications major. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. That's great. What do you like? What do you uh, What do you think about all this? Oh, yeah, that's that's nice. Everything. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm like, I can't. I like I Game of Thrones. Do. You watch? Uh, you have Netflix. Hey, uh, uh, what's your favorite dog? I have a golden retriever. His name's Barney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's the that's the new. So my my last girlfriend, who she was certifiedly insane. <laughs> Aren't she, they was, all? she was a girl that the reason she got a dog, and I found this out long after we started dating. Oh. The reason she got a dog was because she was fucking too many guys at night, and she needed huh. to give herself a reason to go home. So she had to say, "Oh, I can't suck your dick tonight. Bro. I gotta go." feed my dog it is fucked up now again i didn't know that until after otherwise i would have said uh, yeah yeah otherwise yeah. you wouldn't be telling this story i'm getting out of here yeah <laughs> wow yeah i don't know the whole tinder thing to me is so depressing because you build up this this fake fucking relationship talk whatever over the phone <laughs> And then you got to go out, you know, you, you, you got to get dressed. You might get a new shirt, whatever. Whatever you do before you go out, you know, try to get laid or whatever, whatever. And then you get there and it, it never goes how you want it to go, which is fine. And you, when you think it went well, it doesn't go well. And when you think it went bad, it goes well. It's yeah. fucking confusing. Every time I got out with a chick and, and she's great conversation, everything was awesome. I get home. I'm like, that was awesome. I can't wait. She's going to text me a few days. Nothing. Text her, oh, I wasn't interested. Sorry. So what the fuck? Yeah. Great time. And then I'll go out with a chick. She won't say two words. And you get home. Oh, my God. You were so much fun tonight. I'm, what the fuck? How many of these have you had where in their bio they said, not here for hookups? Look, and look, the look, look. The first night you're fucking all of them. <laughs> all of them say that. I, got a, I, I did have a whole podcast on about it where I'd go on and find these profiles. Some of them around here are really funny. Like, uh, you know, down here, a lot of, there's a lot of country clubs. So girls are putting a profile, uh, don't swipe right unless you wear starch jeans. It's like, really? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what the fuck are you going to do when you bring your boyfriend over to your grandma's house and you got to borrow some gas money? And she's looking at his <laughs> jeans and she goes, no, I think you're good. You know, he's like, oh, granny, but you know, you're just trying to buy drugs. That's all that's here, man. Everybody just wants to do drugs. I don't get it. That's it. That's all anybody wants to do. I finally met a chick that didn't want to do drugs. I'd go out, you know, want to do stuff. And it was a lot of fun. It was great. Mm-hmm. I thought she liked the ski mask too. No, that's Maybe what's gonna be. That's what's gonna be difficult. That's, I don't even <laughs> want to pick up dating right now. I don't want to have to explain this. I, and that's what I told her too. Like we were breaking up, and I was like, I, do, "Do you really feel like? Do you think I want to have to explain this to another girl? It was hard enough with you." Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you something. So, if, if with doing comedy, do you still keep Tinder around just for the stories? I always keep Tinder around for the stories. Yes, for comedic purposes. But, like I, even how, when I was how with, well will that do for your mental health down the road? That's the I thing. don't do it. I don't like. I have a I have a tons of matches on here, but I won't even message them because girls never message you first on the Tinder ever. No. So which is which is weird because on Bumble I've never had success on there, but no. What I do, uh, I actually try different tactics. So I'll put up six photos and I'll hold those six photos for for two weeks at a time. I'll see how it does because I actually uh, the fans can roast me all they want. I I buy I have the gold. The Tinder gold, it's like $10 a month. 
and you can see who who likes you and how many people like you. And so, unlimited swipes. Unlimited swipes, things. all that. So for two weeks, or, I'll or try. Or if you swipe <laughs> left and you didn't mean to, and then you can go back. Yeah, you can right? go back. So yeah, exactly. So you can swipe as fast as you want. There's also an app you can go to that will show you a huge page of all the chicks, and you can like them all at the same time or whatever you want to do with that. Uh, <laughs> but I'll try six photos in a bio for two weeks, and I'll see how many likes I get. And then, you know, so I finally found one that fucking works. And, and I, yeah. use it on, I use it on all three of the dating apps, and it works wonders, and it's the weirdest thing. All I did, and, you know, people could take pictures in front of mountains. I used to go down to the local marina, and I would take a picture in front of a nice boat, like with a nice shirt and shit, and I would get, I would get way more matches and swipes. Bitches love boats. I don't know why. Well, but I took a <laughs> – But it depends on the boat because I can't even imagine if you're a girl – and how many times you see a guy and it's a picture of a fish that he bought. Yeah, no, that's brutal. Yeah, yeah, that's not – yeah, you don't want to do the whole fish thing, fellas. You want a nice shirt in front of a nice yacht. Don't do it in front of a bass boat. Don't do it in front of a John boat, you know? Yeah, and, this, and this is why I had to stop with all of this with the – I'm like, you know, I, I can't be single. It's like anytime you're in a relationship, there's too much. There's too much going on. There's too much put into it. It's like there's, there's too many – people are reading in to your fucking photos now. Yeah. Well, all I did, all I did, this is what made my profile successful. And I've been on a lot of dates with it. And I keep it up. I took pictures of me doing shit in my apartment. I have a picture of me washing dishes. I have a picture of me pouring laundry soap. I have a, <laughs> I have a picture of me stirring a pot. Uh, I have a picture of me laying in bed reading a book. And then I have, I think I have one of me. I think I was taking notes. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll put it up on the, uh, well, no, man, I'm not, I don't have the ski mask on it. Uh, yeah. Just if Photoshop one or put like a, you know, draw one on your. On I'll your draw picture. it and I'll put it out there, fellas. So you look at this. I'm telling you, I, with the Tinder gold, I put this profile out and uh, the like shot up to over 99 within a week. I was like, what do they like? Did they, they, and I, that chick I just dated for three months, she said it, it, she felt intrigued by it. Ooh. I wasn't trying anything. Yeah. I was yeah. just doing normal shit in my apartment. <laughs> when I was single, it was, I remember I went out with a girl who, again, uh, not here for hookups and, of course, hooked up. Always. And not only that, after that, she said she loved me. Oh. Yeah. One date, uh, like, I, I think I'm falling in love with you, Tony Mazur. Like, How I, many I months into this was this? One date. Oh, shit. Date. See, I just, I just did it out of, out of, out of, after three months, and then she got scared and left. Yeah, no, one date, and this girl dropped the, dropped the L-bomb, you know, so if I could be a child by saying that. And then another girl I, I i matched with her because like i i put my location a little further so it was like 20 yeah, miles yeah, yeah, yeah. and i matched with a girl in this town uh outside of akron where i was it was at uh, called ravenna ravenna is every shitty kind of town where there's like one nice part uh, that's terrible that's palestine yeah yeah exactly palestine texas and uh so I, I matched and she's like, oh, this is where I'm located. Here's my address. And she had like two photos that were okay. Like, oh, she might have a little, eh, she might be a little overweight, but you know what? Hey, so maybe, you know, I'm, right. not look, I'm not looking for you hey. know, the next wife here. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, well, let's try this. So I'm driving out there. I got the GPS and I'm looking like, where is this place? It says it's coming up. Looking, looking. And sure enough, it's a gravel driveway to a trailer park. Oh boy. She invited so, you over first date to the trailer park. She's got, yep. wow. She's really feeling herself. So I looked in the rear view mirror and I looked ahead and there's no cars. So I no just baseball put, bats. But it, yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, I put it in, I put my car in park and I'm like, you thought about it. What should I do here? <laughs> I could just keep driving or turn around at the next stop uh, mm -hmm. and then just go home and just lose her number. Yeah. Or I could go in for the story and see exactly, what happens. Exactly. So I pulled in for the story. All right. So I go there and she meets me outside and no, she does not look anything like her photo. <clears throat> She's a large, very large rotund, shall we say, <laughs> girl with bright red hair, uh. Ariel from the Little Mermaid. And that, uh, so she's like, <clears throat> she's like, oh, Tony, good to see you here. Come on in. Uh, you have to be quiet. My mom's passed out on the couch. <sighs> All right. So we go into her, right into her bedroom. Okay. Right to business. Let's do it. <sighs> So I look around, so her hair Did is red like Ariel from Little Mermaid mm. because she loves the Little Mermaid. Oh, fuck. As the Little Mermaid, she has posters on the wall. Oh. She has a life-size flounder uh, plush toy. It's just, it's 
Little Mermaid decked out. And this is a woman, again, I should stress this. She was of age. She was probably about 23. Yeah. About, about 18 years too old to actually be enjoying this movie. But she was obsessed with it in this trailer. Mom's passed out. And she's watching Bates Motel on TV. Creepy. And then she's like, uh, she's like, uh, do you smoke weed? And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I'm okay, but you can. Because I'm just like, no, I, I want to be fully aware of my surroundings right now. So she starts, so we're just on the bed. And I'm watching the show that I've never seen before or since. And uh, she's on the bed and she starts like every couple of minutes, like, She's doing, she's basically about to rape me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting ready for the rape. <clears throat> so I'm just laying there. Like I got a pillow, like a little mermaid pillow behind my head. And I'm just laying back like <laughs> this. And then like every so often she's like, so, and then like everything would be funny. She's like, oh, that's funny. And moves over closer. Oh man. So she's closer. doing the face. Yeah. Cause who's laughing at Bates Motel? Oh yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, oh. Let me stretch. Oh, and then puts her arm around me. Put a big bat wing right over your neck. Oh, yeah. And I'm just, I'm here like, um, <laughs> yeah. And then so, you know, every couple of seconds, like the hand starts touching my chest and starts going a little further south. I mean, this is all happening so fast. There's a little mermaid going on. Like, how, are you, how could you possibly be turned on at this point? I am, I, I am completely, I am just wet noodling it right now. <laughs> yeah, there is nothing going on. Well, it's actually like my, it, it's like I was having a war between my brain and my penis. My penis is like, she's a girl. She's recognizable as a girl. Should I do this? And my brain's like, no, don't fucking, don't even mm, think about right. it. So she starts putting her hand on my belt and okay. is about to, about to head south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's also putting her lips, her fat lips yeah. on my neck and starts oh. going up onto my face Brutal. and all of a sudden the door opens uh oh and it's this big black dude holy shit <clears throat> and oh. i'm like uh oh i'm like whoa. and he's like whoa, whoa sorry and she's like, oh my god oh my god it's uh you know jamal or whatever his name is i, <laughs> I think it was his name uh, not, yeah yeah not to sound racist but i think it was jamal jamal i mean that's a great name yeah and <clears throat> he was her drug dealer who was stopping over. It wasn't a boyfriend or it wasn't a fiance. Well, he was right? just stopping by like she, did she know, or she's just getting that many drugs every night? She for, oh, well, yeah, I think so. I think, she, I think it was like, oh, every, you know, every Wednesday at five o'clock. Yeah, I told you I come by at 8 p.m. every night. That bitch. Shit. Like, what, you, what y'all want here? And he's like, whoa. And she's like, oh. And like, uh, she's like, oh, I'll leave you alone and stuff. I'm like, no, no, I, I was about to leave anyways. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I got a headache. And, uh, and of course, she's like, oh, I know, I, it's a little awkward. And I'm like, oh, no, don't worry about it's it. It's fine. I love and, Little Mermaid. It's great. And, yeah, and I got in the car, and I'm like, block? Uh, yes, block. Yeah, no, I would have put the car in reverse and blocked on a stop sign. Oh, yeah, I, I completely peeled Ooh, out of there. Dude, that's, that's when crazy. I, when, I re, when I drove out of there, I'm like, yep, <sighs> I got to be a little more diligent, and I got to yeah. find the right girl. Because Man. that is not the right. And then, of course, yeah, she did eventually message me on Tinder. I, I didn't block her on Tinder, but I blocked her text message. Uh -huh. And she's like, like, sorry, it was so awkward. Hello? Oh, my Are God. Are you still there? No. Like, yeah, we're, no, we're, we're going to. Yeah, we're, I would have uh, unmatched. Right now. I love how you can unmatch with no reason. It's just, Beautiful. it's so stealthy. Just yeah. Yeah, it out. is. Because it happens to me all the time, too. You know, it's crazy. I, uh, no, the, I, I went out with a chick from Tinder. I'll tell this last one and, uh, everything was fine. I, I think I, she may have went to school with me or something. She showed up and, uh, we're like banging for like a few weeks, whatever. I'm not taking her on dates and shit. And, uh, one day this dude calls me and he's like yelling at me on the phone. And I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Who are you? He's like, I'm so-and-so's husband. And I'm like, Ugh. I didn't ask for this. So, you know, he's yelling at me and I finally, like, I was still drinking at the time. I exploded on him. I'm like, listen, dude, not your my fucking fault. wife is out here on the Tinder just swiping away. I'm not the only one. She's told me. I said, if you, you know, you're sending your wife out the door with no ring, there's your fucking problem. Because I always look at the ring, you know, if they come over, they should be wearing it. She didn't have a ring and she's on the dating sites. Why is that my fault? Is that yeah. my fault? No. No, and it's it, it's really if anything he should be. I, it's weird to say this because you don't want to 
You don't want to be in the situation where the person's cheating on no, you. No, I think because I felt like a piece of shit. I'm like, come on, man. Why do? Why did? Why did I? I didn't do anything. I'm just trying. Yeah, to... you didn't do. It. You're just. You're just. <laughs> right I'm just swiping right. I'm enjoying the app. Enjoying my. The fact I don't have roommates. Come on over anytime. Like I can understand why the guy would be pissed, but you should be more pissed at her then. Yeah. Yeah. Call her phone, and then she comes back over like nothing happened. Did you? Did you get one more out of her? Well, yeah, but then I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do at that point? You know, it's like yeah. fuck the bag. The cat's out of the bag. You're here. You know, it's been a few days. What's up? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. I've I've had a lot of fun on this show. This is great. I hope you come back. I'll have you and Chad on, and maybe we can do one with Kevin too, with some more uh, news breaks about Neil. I don't think it's over with him yet. I think he oh, has the, a lot the, more to do. The with. cuckold Neil. Until yeah, I think there's a so lot more to be uncovered now. from all his shit. You know, he needs. If he's not scrolling on his Twitter line, deleting anything he has out there, he probably should start because the investigators of this show are getting to the bottom of it. I hate how I haven't been able to hear from Dominic because he got banned from Twitter. For what reason? What? What did Dominic send 88, the guy who wrote the three-page report about Brian do to get kicked off of Twitter? Nice fella. He's just stating facts. What's, what's Brian's new Twitter, isn't it? Like uh, lip, sweat. lip Sweat. Lip Sweat 69. Uh, but it's funny that Joe Exotic, he's something else. He sent me a link earlier to Brian's uh, Brian's website, and he said, how long do you think until he changes his website? I'll send you the link on Twitter, Tony. And uh, it says, hey, I'm Brian McCarthy. Uh, some people know me as a racist. So Joe Exotic figured out some way to change his website after stealing his YouTube name. Oh, dislabeled. Yeah, he stole his YouTube name. <laughs> he stole his, uh, uh, what is it? Fuck, the Twitter handle, Brian P. McCarthy. He stole that. And then uh, now he somehow has access to the website. It's beautiful. I love what he's doing. That's Real fantastic. patriots. Real patriots out there. Well, but seriously, th thanks for having me. Yeah, I'd love to come back when I, my podcast's actually happening. Yeah, yeah. Follow Tony Mazur on Twitter. That way you know when a podcast is dropping. It's going to be go awesome shit. And it was Twitter, I'm on, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I don't care. Snapchat, all that. All that, dude. Snapchat. Send him a picture of your piece. What are you doing? Don't do that. Yeah, he's getting married I'll, tomorrow. I'll, ju I'll judge it. I'll see if yeah. it's, uh, you know. No I'll, hugs. I'll see how long it is. What is up with that? Guys sending dick pics? Is that a? Because I mean, somebody was talking about this on a podcast yesterday. It's like older guys are doing it now. What the? I I couldn't imagine like standing and taking a picture of my piece and then reviewing it to send. Well, uh, what what about girls who send their pussy? I don't. I'm not a fan of that either. I like tits are fine. T tits are fine, but it, when you're just looking at a, it's like what? It's just a why? It there's nothing Here's hot about it. Here's my rule of thumb for dating. Uh, if you're dating a girl and, and she's sending nudes and the first nude she sends, not her tits or her ass, but her pussy, run away. Okay. I like that. I've never heard that before. So run I away. will keep that in mind because that's happened to me one time before and I should have ran away. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here in East Texas anymore. Yeah. I'd still she, be moved out. If she, like, if the first picture is like a nice, you know, casual, like, oh, here, let me show a little. You know bit. what? That those kind of pictures are hotter anyway. Keep some mystery about it, mystery, please. Yeah, yeah that's why people. That's why Playboy lasted so long. Exactly. Why do you think Hustler and uh, exactly <laughs> why that never took off? Right. But uh, no, it, yeah. If a girl, the first thing she shows is her snatch, then run away. It's Go a problem. It, it, it's a problem. Shit. All right, I'm gonna put this out for release immediately. Absolutely. Fans will latch on to it, man. Uh, yeah, day before your wedding. Congratulations, man. Enjoy your day tomorrow. Thank Stick you, it sir. In. I appreciate and, uh, it. Thanks we'll talk to you me. soon, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's see if I can see.